In February of 2025, Microsoft made a latecomer entry into the quantum computing race by unveiling their brand new Majorana 1 chip. Instead of fixing teams, I guess. Majorana 1 is a so-called topological quantum computer. An incredibly interesting concept and, and certainly a dark horse in our advance to making quantum computers actually useful. Okay, so this is a very specialized topic and I'm not surprised that the YouTube videos I've seen so far on this are rather vague and surface level. So I decided I would try to do what nobody else has done so far. Explain the actual physics behind topological quantum computing. I mean, at least a bit. It is a very complex topic and this is popular science, so there is a limit in how deep we can really go with this. But I want to give you a solid idea of the fundamental concepts. I will start with some basics on topology and topological quantum computing and then move on to the specifics of the Majorana 1 chip and finally discuss what Microsoft has actually achieved and what their prospects are going forward. All right, first, topology. So simply put, topology is a branch of mathematics that is concerned with transforming one geometry into another in a smooth and continuous way. And this means that stretching and bending, for example, are allowed, but not cutting or gluing. The classical example for a topological transformation is that you can deform a coffee mug into a donut and back. Note that you could not deform a donut into a bowl or plate though, because you have to keep the whole. So it's not just morphing anything into anything. Uh, there are rules and limitations. And another popular example are knots. There are many ways in which you can knot a single piece of string, all of which have been categorized in knot theory. Some knots are equivalent to each other, which might not be apparent at all, but this can be calculated using topology, deforming one knot into another without cutting the string. And connected to knots, but uh, much more relevant for us later, are braids. How you can braid strands, which one goes in front or behind which other strand, and which braid can be continuously deformed to which others. And believe it or not, but this is also a mathematical topic, and it is one that we will be using for topological quantum computing. You could say that a topological property is something deeper, something that is not necessarily changed by any change to the object. For example, um, with a coffee mug, having a hole. So some changes are just superficial in this sense and do not change the underlying topology. And this general idea is also applicable to quantum states. Topological quantum physics was originally invented in a particle physics context. In fact, it was the work on this topic that famed string theorist Edward Witten got his Fields Medal for. But you sometimes have the same physical phenomenon in particle physics as something that particles do, and in condensed matter physics as something that a collective of particles does. And this is also the case with topological quantum physics. There are some specific quantum states that are called topological because they do have a deeper structure which makes them resistant to many types of changes to the state. Remember, you can turn a donut into a mug, but it's still the same fundamental geometry. Uh, you can change the appearance, but not the essence. And this sounds great and useful, but unfortunately you cannot just take any quantum state and turn it topological. This only applies to very specific examples, most of which involve superconductivity or superfluidity. In some of those systems, it is possible to create so-called quasi-particles, which are not particles, just the effect of parts of the system acting collectively together. 
And these can, in many respects, be treated as particles. For example, you might know the La Ola or Mexican wave from sports events, where the fans in the stadium create the wave by throwing up their arms and standing up. In many ways, this wave packet has particle properties. It has a location, at least roughly. It has a speed, it can be created or destroyed, so it could be described as a Laola quasi-particle. But it's just a big system doing something collectively. One significant example of quasi-particles are the Majorana zero modes that can be created at the boundaries of a superconductor. The defining feature of a Majorana particle is that they are their own anti-particle, though this will only matter for us here only indirectly. The more interesting feature for quantum computing is that a pair of Majorana zero modes can be combined into a single quasi-particle. And this can be used to store information non-locally. Meaning the information is not stored at either mode, but in the relation between them. And this is an example of a topological quantum state, because the quantum information is stored in a global property of a system, not in singular particles within the system. This makes the state very resistant to noise, because the noise would have to apply to both Majorana modes at the same time to affect them. But there is more. The second connection to topology is braiding. How do you braid a quasi-particle? Well, you can braid their world lines. What's a world line? A world line just means tracking your position in space over time. If you stand still, your world line looks like this. If you move somewhere, it looks like this. And if you move back, it's this. These are the world lines of four quasi-particles. And if you exchange the positions of two, you get this. Braids! You can create braids by just exchanging two quasi-particles, and this can become arbitrarily complicated. These braids also have a topological quality in that the end state of the system only depends on what kind of braiding operation was done, not on the exact path that was taken. Again, noise will only affect the world line locally, but not change the braid itself, and therefore keep the quantum state intact. Okay, this is cute and all, but how can I use that for quantum computation? Well. It turns out that any operation you require for quantum computing can be replaced by a more or less complex braid. For example, this braid is the same as doing an X gate. This is a Hadamard transformation. And this is a C0. It gets more complicated for more realistic cases, but you can still at least approximate any regular quantum gate by braiding quasi-particles worldwide. And that's what makes topological quantum computing so interesting. Both the initial state is topologically protected, and also every operation you do is braiding, which is also topologically protected. So if you could actually create Majorana zero modes and also figure out how to braid them and to measure them, you could create a very useful quantum computer. So let's see what Microsoft has done with this idea. The fundamental building block of the Majorana chip is a nanowire made out of indium arsenide and aluminium. This combines a semiconductor with a superconductor. And Microsoft called this a topoconductor in their press release and a new state of matter. Okay, PR stunt? I mean, they do have a point technically, but um, it's a bit much. This device can host Majorana zero modes at its ends, and you can construct quantum states out of pairs of those. And uh, these are our qubits. The qubits are a collective property of both modes, which gives it topological protection, as we said. To be more precise, the Microsoft design uses a combination of two nanowires, which are connected by a normal non-topological wire to create the signature H structure. Microsoft calls those tetrons and combines them with single nanowires to create larger and larger quantum computer chips. 
The company has published a roadmap how this can be scaled, and they claim they can fit a million qubits on their chip in this fashion. Note that that doesn't mean that they have done it yet, just that their architecture allows for it in principle. All operations on the qubits are done by braiding the Majorana modes, but this isn't done by physically moving them around. Uh, yeah, I know, disappointing. Microsoft makes use of measurement-only quantum computing, which means that instead of performing operations on the qubits, you do specific projective measurements and then create the same results. So you can perform a set of measurements to create the same state you would get if you had physically moved around the particles to braid them. This is a pretty cool concept, and as it happens, it was pioneered by my thesis advisor. And finally, the most important question. Does this kind of quantum computer still look like this golden chandelier? Yeah, of course, yes. The quantum computer itself, the chip, is at the very bottom. The entire chandelier structure is just a multi-stage cooling device. Every quantum computer that needs to be cooled will look like this or similar. And as the Majorana is based on superconductors, yes, this means we need some serious cooling here. All right, so much for the technology of the Majorana one, but what about its significance? What's the deal with the Microsoft Majorana? First, it isn't fully settled yet whether Microsoft has actually produced Majorana Zero Modes in their chip. While they have presented some statistical indication, they haven't fully ruled out alternative interpretations yet and have acknowledged that in their Nature paper. And this is of course a major shortcoming especially as the only previous uh, report about successful topological quantum computing had to be retracted in 2018. Microsoft could not conclusively demonstrate this fundamental achievement in February 2025 when they released their paper, nor in March 2025 at the meeting of the American Physical Association. So this point is still very much the crux of the entire project. Because if they could provide strong evidence for the existence of Majorana quasi-particles in their chip, their quantum computer would have a lot of potential. They are certainly behind other groups at this point, but their architecture has the potential to leapfrog everybody else in a very short time. Because noise, decoherence and error correction are still the most limiting factors with current quantum computers. We need to spend a lot of our time and effort on optimizing operations and minimizing noise. Plus, the use of quantum error correction creates a huge demand for additional qubits. Because for every single qubit that you can use for the actual computation, you need several other qubits just for the quantum error correction. So, this creates a huge overhead of qubits. And if you could avoid a lot of that because your qubits already have built-in topological protection, this could be a tremendous advantage. Possibly another factor was that the publication of the Majorana appeared to be strongly driven by PR considerations. And I don't mean that in a disparaging way, it's just a normal fact of corporate research. If you spend years and who knows how many million dollars on a project, you have to be able to show something for your money. Even if you haven't figured out 100% of it yet, you still have to show something. And in my opinion, this is mainly what this Microsoft presentation was. The problem with PR is often that you have to portray what you're selling in an overly optimistic light and uh, this can be at odds with the real situation at hand. For example, if you claim on the one hand that you can scale up to a million qubits with your technology, and that might be perfectly true, but on the other hand you cannot even prove that you have a single qubit right now, it's just not a great look. To summarize, I think it's great that somebody is pursuing the concept of topological quantum computing. I think it has incredible potential. I think the progress made by Microsoft so far is amazing. But 
they still have a long way to go. And also they need to prove that what's going on in their chip is actually what they claim what's going on.